Unfortunately, there is no further time for questions and comments. The time is now members' statements. I recognize the member from Sarnia Lambton. And Thank you, Speaker. I appreciate that. Well, it's an honour to rise in the Legislature today to announce another important investment in Sarnia Lambton by the Government of Ontario. Recently, I was pleased to share the good news with a number of different organizations in Sarnia Lambton that our government is investing nearly $550,000 in five different community festivals through the 2022 Reconnect Ontario program. The Blue Water Health Foundation Block Party, the Southwestern Ontario International Film Festival, the Victoria Playhouse Petroya, the Blue Water Border Fest and Music Festival, the Revelry Music Festival have all been selected by the Ministry of Tourism, Culture and Sport as local Sarnia Lambton recipients of the Ontario Reconnect program, grants that support entertainment and jobs in the tourism, culture and entertainment sectors. In total, the Ontario government, your Ontario government, is investing more than $48 million across this great province through the Ontario Reconnect program to help create amazing staycation experiences and boost local economic growth. By investing more than half a million dollars in Sarnia Lambton, these festivals and events, our government is delivering on a much needed support for local businesses in our community. And it continues to recover from the effects of the pandemic. Mr. Speaker, this is great news to the government of Ontario to ensure that Ontario is making a positive difference in my community. Thank you. Next, I recognize the member from Algoma, Manitoulin. Speaker, today is the start of the 138th Providence Bay Agricultural Fair. This is a mainstay of Manitoulin Island that brings families from across the province for fun and entertainment. However, Speaker, there are concerns going into fair weekend this year as Highway 542 and Highway 551 leading to Providence Bay remains in a state of disrepair. I was traveling on these highways last weekend, and I can understand why people on Manitoulin Island are frustrated with the government's quick-fix solutions. Roads are being left in conditions where the pulverizing of the old surface is leaving large chunks of material causing dangerous driving conditions and damage to windshield shock absorbers and tires. This has an effect on the cycling and cyclist community as well. This level of work and road resurfacing would not be accepted in the Muskokas. Then why shove it? to Manitoulin. This government needs to step up to the plate and ensure that residents and visitors alike can safely travel on Manitoulin highways. Speaker, Manitoulin Island is the largest freshwater island in the world. So I say on behalf of all hot eaters, do them once, do them right, pave our highways properly. Next, I recognize the member from Brantford Brant. Thank you, Speaker. Great to see you in the chair this morning. I'm happy to rise in the House today to showcase both a Government of Ontario program and a happy recipient in my riding of Brantford Brant. Through the great work of the Ministry of Tourism, Culture and Sport, the Reconnect Ontario 2022 program has, is making an investment of more than $48 million. This program helps festival and event organizers carry out events that encourage people to travel, participate, and rediscover the beauty and diversity of all that Ontario communities have to offer. I was so pleased that the Paris Agricultural Society was successful in their application and that they were awarded $105,000 from this program a few weeks ago. Wow. The fair is constantly changing as the agricultural sector evolves but it never strays from the commitment of over 160 years to bring entertainment and agricultural education to the community. Agriculture is the single biggest economic sector in Brantford Brant, and this festival funding for the great folks of the Paris Agricultural Society cannot come at a better time. Learning about agriculture, having fun, and speaking with the men and women that grow the food that is on our dining room tables day in and day out is partly what the Reconnect Ontario program is all about. Congratulations to the Paris Agricultural Society, and between September 1st to the 5th, see you all at the Paris Fair this year. Next, I recognize the member from Oshawa. 
Thank you, Speaker. I am proud to join this 43rd Parliament, re-elected for a third term to serve Oshawa. It is an honour and a privilege to come here and stand in my place on behalf of constituents, families and workers across my riding. I'm appreciative of the trust and hope that I bring with me from my community. Thank you to my staff, who has been working these past eight years to support constituents with compassion and care. The load is heavy, and none of us would be able to do this work without our teams. To the volunteers who spoke to voters, knocked on thousands of doors, raised money and committed their time and heart to our bright, positive, motivated campaign, thank you. To my core campaign team, CFO, manager and volunteer coordinators who put their lives on hold to work tirelessly during the election, thank you. To my family, friends and loved ones, I love you and I appreciate you. And Speaker, I am blessed to still have my little grandma in my life. She's 101 years old and was very proud to vote for her granddaughter. Hi, Grandma. I know that that applause is for my grandma. I will pass it along. <laughs> Speaker, all of us in this room heard sincere and heartfelt concerns during the election. We are still hearing from distraught families and work workers, letters and calls from real folks concerned about collapsing health care systems, public education, the lack of safe, affordable and available housing, rising poverty and the terrible suffering of so many without the addictions and mental health supports they seek. We have vital and important work to do on behalf of real people who have trusted us to listen and serve them well. I will continue to serve sincerely and be the strong voice I have now three times been elected to be. Thank you, Oshawa. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Mississauga Lakeshore. Thank you, Speaker. I'd first like to congratulate you on your re-election and to congratulate all our colleagues from bo for both new and returning on both sides of this aisle of being elected to this House. I'm honoured to be back for another term representing the people of Mississauga Lakeshore. I'm proud of all the progress we've made over the last four years, especially in South Mississauga. That includes a multi-billion dollar project to build the largest and most advanced hospital in Canadian history. It includes 1,152 new long-term care beds, more than any other riding in this province, and the first residential hospice in Mississauga. It includes the new $5 billion Hazel McCallion Line and a new rapid, rapid uh, transit corridor along Lakeshore that will support the Lakeview Village and the Brightwater community along the lakefront. We, we've come a long way, and Speaker, last week the throne speech laid out a plan to ensure the progress continues. Earlier this week, I joined delegations from Mississauga and the region of Peel at the AMO Policy Conference in Ottawa meeting with ministers focusing on the recovery from COVID-19's pandemic, our shared infrastructure priorities, and fixing the housing supply crisis. I look forward to working together with the municipal partners and with all members here to deliver positive results for the people of Ontario over the next four years. Thank you. Statement, member for Hamilton West, Ancaster Dundas. Like all Hamiltonians, Speaker, I was heartsick to learn of the massive raw sewage spill into, Coots, uh, into Shadow Creek and Coots Paradise. Today, I want to share some good news on the progress Hamiltonians are taking to restore this beloved, provincially significant wetland. Step one in the remedia uh, remediation activities has begun, with an expected dredging of 11,000 cubic, cubic metres of sediments. Thanks to city staff for the tour of the area. And thanks for sharing your expertise and your obvious pride in playing a role to restore Shadow Creek. Why is this area so special? Coots Paradise is the largest wetland at the western end of Lake Ontario. It is a magnificent example of plant biodiversity and is home to 35 endangered species. This location is also an important migratory bird stopover. One of our uh, more famous inhabitants is our local bald eagle. The return of the endangered bald eagles to this area is a fantastic story. Catching a glimpse of them soaring over uh, Coos Paradise is truly a remarkable sight. And more good news, an incredibly rare Blanding's turtle was released back into Coos Paradise to join only two other Blanding turtles presently living in Coots. Hamiltonians are rightfully proud of our natural areas and we are taking action. The City of Hamilton and Community Environmental Partners are collaborating on the diversity uh, the Biodiversity Action Plan partners include Hamilton Naturalists, Environment Hamilton, the Royal Botanical Gardens. Their work will protect, enhance and restore biodiversity in Hamilton. With great gratitude to all of you who stand up 
to defend our environment, I thank you. Member statements. Member for Sault Ste. Marie and Chief Government Whip. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. The arts, culture, and entertainment industries are crucial in every community. They enhance our lives, they attract tourism, boost economic growth, and preserve our culture and our heritage. Earlier this year, I was privileged to witness an incredible preservation of our community heritage and growth of the arts and entertainment in my riding of Sault Ste. Marie through an investment of $500,000 through the Northern Ontario Heritage Fund into a space known as the Loft at the Algoma Conservatory of Music. The Loft is located in the attic of a building that over a hundred years ago housed the offices of the historic Sault Ste. Marie Pulp and Paper Company. Although the paper mill was unfortunately closed in 2012, the site has been completely transformed over the last decade into a community hub, and the loft is now a huge part of that transformation. A dusty and forgotten storage area has been converted into a warm, beautiful, inviting performance venue while preserving the heritage of a national historic site. The loft hosts a state-of-the-art recording studio with some of the best equipment available in the world and is connected to a live performance hall in the machine shop next door. This incredible innovation allows for live performances to be captured with the absolute best in sound and video capabilities. The unique possibilities of this one-stop shop for performance and recording is unparalleled, and I am so excited to see what opportunities the team at The Loft can continue to bring to the arts and entertainment industry in Sault Ste. Marie. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Ottawa South. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And, uh, I had the chance to listen to the minister this morning talk about her plan to stay open uh, in Ontario in our health care system. And well, well, uh, well, you may not want to clap yet. While the thousand beds uh, of isolation opening up are welcome, they are months late. Uh, forcing residents to go to a place outside of their community uh, seems cruel, but it really doesn't reflect the lessons we learned in the pandemic in long-term care. The thing that's most concerning is the minister's, uh, the minister's refusal to rule out private for-profit care, increasing that in our system. And 25 years ago in this province, a government of the day told us that was our only solution for long-term care. And we've all seen the results of that in the pandemic. So this government seems to be set on establishing separate parallel systems, private for-profit. And here's the challenge. The greatest challenge that exists right now in our health care system are people. Having enough people to care for the people we care for most. Our public system is in crisis. And what this government Order. is proposing, Mr. Order. Speaker, is they are proposing to set up another parallel system that is going to compete for those personnel, that is going to compete for those personnel to make a profit. And what this government needs to do is repeal Bill 124, get serious about foreign trade health care professionals and actually talk to frontline workers. Thank you, Speaker. Member Statements. The member for Don Valley North. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's of this moment, the North Shore General Foundation Radio Thun, in partnership with A1 Chinese Radio, is holding an annual major outreach event to raising funds for a landmark new senior care home at North York General Hospital. Right. Among the first designed using insight from the pandemic, the home would be fully integrated with the hospital to provide residents with full access to emergency and specialty services. Speaker, to better serve the senior from different cultural backgrounds, the new home will be offering culturally diverse programming, resources, and food. The government is not only adding bed, it is creating long-term care space for seniors in modern, safe, and comfortable surroundings where they will feel truly valued and at home. Speaker, I want to thank North York General Hospitals and its leadership team for their commitment to provide best care and experience for our community. I also want to thank all those involved in this great event. It is your participation 
that make Ontario a better place that we are all proud of. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Member Stevens, the member for Durham. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It gives me great pleasure to rise in this chamber today to recognize an outstanding resident from my riding of Durham. Recently, my office had the pleasure to congratulate Mr. Paul Arculus from Port Perry for his 25 years of outstanding service as the president of the Lake Scugog Historical Society and the curator of the Scugog Museum. Paul and Eleanor Arculus settled their family in Cartwright Township in 1970 and for the past 52 years established themselves as pillars of the community. In his many roles as teacher, author, and renowned storyteller, Paul has shared his love of local history with thousands of residents in working toward the preservation of historical buildings, sites, and cemeteries. Just last year, Port Perry High School renamed a scholarship the Paul Arculus Bursary, which is awarded to a local student pursuing post-secondary studies in the field of history. On behalf of all Ontarians, thank you, Paul, for celebrating our past and honouring those who were a part of building the great province of Ontario. Thank you. That concludes our member statements this morning.